this time I will open the executive session on Senate Bill 434, reopen it, and invite our member of judiciary to join us, please. And we are grateful to have your input. There are um, there are a number of amendments. I'm not sure that the one that Representative Harvey brought is the one she intended to bring. But it is. Okay. All right. It, it, it appears that you're eliminating the entire bill. No. Okay. Okay. Then I guess right now. In any event, um, there. On the heels of our lengthy discussion in uh, public hearing on Senate Bill 434, a number of people have taken the initiative to um, propose amendments, which the clerk has here. Now we actually have three amendments. Uh, we have uh, one. Uh, do you have yours there? No, I gave you the one. You've uh, got you, you have it all. No, I have. I just got yours. I, have, I don't know if I got number four here, but I just want to keep it oh, interesting. Oh, of course. We maybe it's <laughs> maybe it duplicates someone else's idea. It's Is not that, actually my amendment, though. I can't take that for it. Well, that's not it's relevant. Does, it, does it have your book. name on it? It it does, but I I didn't load it. Okay. Well. Since you've spoken up, I'll, I'll recognize Representative Hopper if you wanted to speak to your proposed amendment. I only got 12 copies. I, I thought that was enough. I try not to fill, fill as few trees as I possibly can. Try not, try not to kill as few trees. That's good. It's a good start. Uh, this is not an official amendment. It's no, it's just proposed amendment I because see. if it, it seemed from uh, my real concern about this is a lot of. To me, what happens in the legislature is a good idea gets a little out of hand. And to me, the initial bill that the uh, was trying to be remedied by uh, uh, Senator Genway had a, a, quite a bit of problems. One of which was that it's, it seems like it inherently gives, in the effort to expedite things quickly, it handed over way too much authority to the Attorney General. Um, the testimony from the AG's office was that in an emergency situation like, uh, this is all obviously talking just about the first part of the bill, um, in an emergency situation like such as a bomb or somebody's life is in danger, the Attorney General's office needs the authority to supersede a warrant and fax something over a subpoena to, to get that information quickly, which I, I don't think anybody in, uh, has argue that that's not a good idea. The problem is it's kind of uh, um, morphed and expanded itself to include such things as going after drugs and other stuff, which might be admirable, but it's not necessary that we should circumvent the Constitution for a, a drug bust. So we have this warrant that uh, uh, Claire was kind enough to print up for or send me. And it, it basically basically changes the thing, so changes the, uh, 434 so that you can only use a, a attorney attorney uh, general or or county attorney subpoena in the event of an emergency, like somebody's life is in danger. And it also, on um, as you see by the amendment on page one, it changes. It changes the threshold when they can use that to be probable cause. And she was kind enough to uh, um, put the definitions of what probable cause are in Black's dictionaries, because there was some confusion during testimony on what that was. So if you look at the amendment, I, I think it's, to me, it makes it a lot more, it, it, it takes the initial bill and makes it a lot more, to me anyway, constitutionally palatable. Because it's saying it's only limited cases, the attorney general and or the county attorney or whoever can use this power, which supersedes a warrant, to to affect an emergency situation, to try to remedy an emergency situation where somebody's life and or you know, or a school might get blown up or something like that. 
But that's the crux of the amendment. Because the other one to me is just getting getting out of control. Because you can broaden, I mean, the way the initial bill is written, it seems like it could almost be broadened so that they don't need a more, to be more and more situations where they justify why they don't need a warrant. It appears, Representative Hopper, that, I mean, it's not clear since this is not an official amendment. Um, have you addressed the real ID portion? The real ID, there was some talk by, uh, um, I don't want to say who because I, I don't know if that was in, in, but I heard talk and I can't remember exactly who, that's one reason I want to say it, of, uh, Dividing the question on the House floor and killing that part of it altogether, and based on how the House has uh, dealt with real ID so far, that seems like a plausible and very likely scenario. I, I haven't I haven't uh, discussed it that much, but that's what I've heard people talking about. Is so your amendment wouldn't propose eliminating that at this time. I, that's As a separate. A this, yeah, this is make. just re relevant to the first part of the. The thing, and whether we divide the question on uh, 430, <clears throat> 434, and kill the second half on the floor, I don't know. But. And I believe uh, Representative Harvey has brought an amendment that simply uh, eliminates that section, just the section on real ID. So that's another uh, menu item that we have here. And Representative Chase, would you care to summarize? what you have done as well. But what I have done is similar to what Representative Hopper has, has done. Uh, the language is uh, a little bit less uh, involved in that um, I've included language uh, in that uh, uh, paragraph, uh, Roman number one, that adds the language uh, that, and further that an emergency situation exists. Would you care to hand that out so yes, that we have, have an opportunity to look at it? Copies to send around here. And, and the other thing is that this uh, amendment also uh, eliminates the real ID portion. It's my understanding that uh, the real ID portion is moved at this point because, uh, as you heard last week, uh, the state has already received uh, an extension. So uh, it would be a very appropriate for us to uh, to remove that portion of the bill. Uh, and then, so what What I think Representative Hopper was getting at uh, was that he wants to make it more difficult for the Attorney General's office to issue these administrative subpoenas. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't leave out the word reasonable grounds and, and replace it with probable cause, but I did put into uh, Roman numeral one that it would, re it would it would have to be an emergency situation that these that this administrative subpoena could be issued. And then in what used to be paragraph three, but is now two, uh, we also inserted the uh, as you see it the end of the paragraph only in an emergency situation. Yeah. What it does is it, it includes the, you know, it says to the Attorney General's office, okay, we'll let you include these extra items that you wanted to include, but in order for you to execute a, an administrative subpoena, now we've raised the bar, you have to, you have to declare that it's an emergency situation. What defines What's an emergency situation? Well, uh, the Attorney General's office would have to define that. For me, the, the major structural problem with this with this bill is actually an existing statute. And we, we cover this, I think everyone agrees, that, that there are certain things that are wrong. To me, it's, if, if I'm working from Representative Chase's amendment, it's, it's line 22. If you're working on the original bill, it's uh, the line 29 on page 1, and that is that the Attorney General shall not disclose any information obtained as a result of said demand to accept. Uh, 
Representative Weber was talking about the fact that judges really work in a sort of retrospective point of view, where they're sort of looking at these things and, and asking them to be prospective and, and, and preemptory is, is kind of unusual for them. But when it comes to this, this line, the Attorney General shall not disclose, I, my problems are related to, uh, I think everyone's concerns, that this could happen undercover with, with evil intent on the part of the Attorney General's office, though I don't really want to say that, but we have federal examples where overreaching of power has taken place without judicial oversight. And so since judges work in retrospective areas, or in a, in, a, in a viewpoint of being retrospective, my concern really is that the structural deficiency here is that once an administrative subpoena has been issued, that it sort of is under cover, and you never see it never sees the light of day. And if judges are retrospective in that case, I, I would work for uh, adding language that says for every administrative subpoena, a judge will evaluate the potential for impropriety and notify those investigating investigated they, that, that an inquiry has been made into their records, thereby establishing a paper trail and perhaps you know, alleviating some of this, this concern that we have. Uh, this might happen under, say, the condition where the case is closed or this person has been ruled out as a suspect in an ongoing case. But I'm very uncomfortable with this, you know, shall not disclose essentially under any, under any circumstances um, that they've been investigated. Representative Gary? Yes, I'd, I'd like to respond uh, with basically a disclosure that I've introduced an amendment that repeals the entire law. It repeals um, 7B, RSA 7B on which all this is based, which means real ID is gone, this whole bill is gone, the law is gone, and, it, and it's back to, you know, I'm a temporary Kirkite now, it's back to uh, basically getting getting a judicial warrant to do all this stuff. So my, my amendment repeals the existing law and, and blows away the entire bill. Um, so it would solve all your problems. Chase and, and, and maybe this is not the best forum for this bill to be discussed. Mm -hmm. Judiciary. And maybe the best. Criminal justice. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the best, the best approach to this would be to recommend IPL at this point and, and advise the Attorney General's office to come back with a better bill that gets directed to judiciary. Or criminal justice. Criminal justice. Representative Kale. I, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I don't think, that, uh, other than the real ID part, which we pretty much all agreed to strip out, I don't think that anybody really has any problem with the changes that have been made, but more with the existing law. Uh, I myself have tr trouble with the part where the Attorney General can delegate to the Assistant Attorney General who can delegate to the County Attorney General who delegates to the Assistant County Attorney you know, it's down to the Yahoo level, and and I, I just don't like to see that without some sort of oversight as to what's being done. Now, Representative Thomas. Yes, thank you. And uh, I know the chair and I certainly thought that this bill on its surface was kind of a scram dunk, and here we are with a second day on this thing, and and it's become quite confusing. So uh, I I would if. When the time comes, I will make an ideal recommendation. Representative Barry. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and I was going to second uh, Mr. Representative Chase's motion on ideal. Was that an official motion, Representative Chase? It's, 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 representative it's, it's, Thomas made the official motion. Well, well, I think second. Representative Chase did it first. I'm just going to second whoever made it. Yeah, so second. Okay. I'm seconding whoever. Can we strip off the real ID part, send it to another committee, either? Judiciary or criminal justice, and say we have to make a recommendation no. to we, the House. We have to make it. We have to make a recommendation to the House. All right now, is the motion on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have an official motion on the floor? Mm -hmm. I guess you can make your pick as to who's going to be. Oh, that's strange. 
We have we have a motion to ITL by Representative Chase. Is there a second? I, I, I second it. Representative Hardy. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I want to talk to the ITL motion. Um, I'm not convinced that that's the correct course of action. I remarked to uh, Representative Harvey last time we talked about this bill that perhaps this committee has the right level of ignorance to make some effort and, and accomplish something when it comes to polishing up the rough edges on this bill. Um, if we ITL, uh, we sort of lose the, I guess, the, the fresh-eyed look that we've given to it in that we don't know anything about this, but we've identified some real problem areas, and I would hate to have uh, those areas for a correction be lost because we say, well, you know, after arguing, <coughs> debating during three three periods, the, the the merits of this bill and how it can be fixed, that we say, oh, we're going to throw up our hands and say it. But overall, we're going to kill it because I, I think it's important that we capture what we've added, value, the value we've added to it, and um, <coughs> perhaps allow others to, to take a shot at it, this, this being a, a, whatever the second thing Yeah, so thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I think I, uh, a lot of uh, uh, what Representative Fargo said I agree with, especially the ignorant part. And, um, Speak to yourself. What? <laughs> <laughs> and and um, yeah, I, I think we, I think if we ITL this instead of or maybe at least in from study it or something. But right now we have an opportunity to change things. Like right now in this bill, the attorney general's office explained that the only um, oversight currently being used for this process is the attorney general's office which is, I, I think we all know why we have different branches of government, you know, it's, it's for oversight to, I mean, I think that the Constitution describes the uh, Senate as a counter to the House, not as a complement to, for that purpose. And, and, and there's a lot of things we have an opportunity to change and fix that we will not have if we get uh, <coughs> ITL this. Representative Barry. One quick one. Uh, the, the reason I would I would support ITL is I, I believe that uh, any other committee goes to and they took a look at it like we did would say we come up with very similar ideas that we we found nothing new and unique at this committee found so the next committee will be able to fix it too. Can I just wait? Sorry, Representative Harvey. I think we, we, this is not the time and place to deal with this bill, and if an amendment had come in to bring a committee forward, I would say yes. But I would also point out to you that I don't have as much faith in other committees as I have in this one, because this committee picked out the flaws in the law that another committee has said are fine. And several other committees have not picked out, including the Senate committees. So this committee, I think, is very astute, very common sense, very public minded, and we tend to look and analyze and, and we tend to look and analyze, look at things and analyze them and see things maybe with a fresh light that other people have not. And that I think at this point, just to say that another committee is better equipped to do this, I would not do that. I think this committee is well equipped to do it. I think this isn't the time and place, and I think if it came back, probably we'd have to fight to get it back. But I think that it should be brought back to this committee. And if this committee wanted to form, take another week. I don't know if it's an early IT, if it's an early reporting bill, but if this committee wanted to come back with a with an amendment that this should be studied, I think that would probably be better than killing it all together. Because I don't necessarily think that just abdicating is the way to go, but I know what this feeling is on committees, and I know that it's an election year, and I know that it's summer. I also think that if a lot of people want to be used to protect the public privacy as well as to ensure the public safety as a campaign issue, that's one you could really hang your hat on, and that's what we're doing. So I think that I'm kind of mixed on the idea. 
but we do appreciate Representative Weber from another committee. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I was not taking any of those remarks. <laughs> no, I, I never meant to be personal. I just meant to say that this has passed through other committees, and it even passed through the Senate, and there were no objections in the Senate this time. And we've looked at it, and we've all of a sudden had a red flag go up, and perhaps some red flags that maybe we need to investigate those red flags. Is this, an, Madam Chair, is this an early reporting bill? Pardon? It, it, needs, it needs to be reported out by uh, April 10th at the very latest. So we do have a motion on the floor. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to that motion? Representative Carlin. Depending on what the motion is, or what the vote on the motion is, um, I think it's clear to all of us that that the uh, real ID section is wrong, and I just wanted to acknowledge that, that, that there is no reason for us to deal with uh, the real ID part. And Representative Chase described what the action of Homeland Security as an extension. Uh, I know that is a inflammatory word to some people. Perhaps it should be characterized better as a state exemption. But, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, what the language was in, in the... In the wink, wink, on the... They, that, that they're no longer dealing with this. They're extending everything. Okay. So the motion is ITL. The clerk will take the roll. Um, the motion is to recommend inexpedient to legislature. Senate Bill 434. Um, Representatives Harvey. Yes. Kelly Pitts. Can't come back later. I see yes. Anderson is not here. Chase, yes. Borden. Yes. Edwards is not here. Fargo. No. Friedrich. No. Kalen. No. Lake is not here. Thomas. Yes. Intron Hansen are not here. Garrity. Yes. Barry. Yes. Divine. No. Hopper. No. Kane. Kane. Yes. Okay, the vote is eight yeas and five nays. this bill was assigned. And after sitting here and listening to you for two sessions, this bill belongs with you because the fresh eyes and the new look have made all the difference in committees that have passed this through, as Representative Kelly Pitts and others have said, that have passed this through and passed it along and not examined the underlying philosophy. This is a remarkable committee. Thank you. I wish you'd come and visit us more. We can go next. Madam Chair, next Valentine's no, 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 no. Day, I'm coming to the <laughs>